All right, today we're taking the API we've built and making it a functional API using JSON. Okay, let's get this started. So we're gonna be taking the current responses that we do, the current requests that we take in, we're gonna provide back a JSON response to each of them. So there are a few different levels here that we need to build in. We firstly need to build in just a base level JSON response if they don't provide any sort of information. We'll also then wanna provide JSON at each point. So that is taking the increment access usage and providing a response, taking the different requests if they put in an invalid request, also, if they actually get through to a request, uh, providing any error reporting uh, back to the user, or otherwise, if all all uh, succeeds, then going through and actually providing their data that they requested for. So, I'm not going to do all of this to camera, but the effective, effectively, what we're trying to eventually re re provide is uh, a return data variable here, which uh, for for the default here. We're just gonna have as an empty array, and we're going to set this uh, to have some standard pieces. So we're gonna have success equals false, and we're gonna have error, and we're gonna specify a default error. So that way we're gonna have uh, that by default, if no data gets through and we just fail all checks, we can have uh, successful is false, so that this successfully did not run, that this is the error that occurred, and then in time we would also include uh, a data variable, and that would be for if uh, we're requesting information, that we're able to include any of that information into that, uh, into that data variable itself. So in this case that's going to be empty, and our error we're going to have uh, invalid request. And this is going to allow us to have a real basic start to having the data coming out. So we're going to then, after we've gone through all of our checks, we're going to echo out JSON encode the return data. And that just means that uh, if we're, we're providing the information that they're requested, uh, or if it's an error report, it's JSON encoded. So that is, it's put into JSON format so that the other server or the end user can put that in and see what all the information is. So we're gonna echo that out and we're gonna exit. And that way, after this, all this is run, we then have that end output. Okay, so before I jump in and change all the functions, I wanna give you an understanding as to what exactly we're doing. So in here, what we wanna do is we wanna provide a returning value. So that is, we wanna return the user either uh, that it's failed, or that here's the MySQL connection variable. So by default here, we're going to have that the return is false. That is, if we get through this whole process and it returns, it's gonna return this by default. We also need to change this return value to be that dollar return. So that if we get through this process, we then can return that. What we need to have though is if this doesn't fail to connect, so previously we we're having if it failed to connect then we we're providing an error message and exiting. In this case what we're going to do is we're actually going to return is going to be set to the MySQL by connection and that is just so that we know that it's passed any, any error checking we can return that as the new value rather than the false. And so this is our entire way that we're going to be changing around. Basically, we're going to be returning false if it's failed at any stage. Otherwise, return the piece of data that we require. And what that means is we need to go back to our main function where everything is running at the bottom here. And what we need to be able to do is in here, when we access this connection here, we actually want to build in an exception. We want to check for if the connection equals false, then we want to change the return data to reflect the new state. And in this case, we could actually just set the return data as error to equal something like failed, failed to connect to MySQL. And that way it's gonna be returning that as the new data. And we can build in an else and put the other rest of the function around. So that basically allows us to go through, iterate through the entire function if it's 
the connection has been false because we don't have the password or whatever reason, we're able to provide that back to the user in the JSON encoded return data. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through and change each of the functions now to reflect this so that by default they return false or if they're successful then they're returning the data. Okay, so I've gone through and updated each of the functions just to reflect this new return false, return true style process. So let's go through and just give a quick understanding of each. So we've got insert the data here. So by default, returning false. If we go through the entire function and it successfully runs the MySQL query, then we're going to return true and return that back. Read the data. We're going through and returning false by default and then it's running the SQL query. And as long as there's one result or at least one result provided, then we're going to return the results instead of the false. And that's the basic concept here. We're going through, we're returning false by default and going through an updating function if there's uh, data. So edit the data by default, returning false. If we go through the process and we manage to get past this SQL statement and it actually picks up information, we're returning true. What we're then doing is inside this for, for each, in theory, we should only be picking up one entry here, but I basically set this to true before going through the for each that by default here, we're going to say any of these is going to successfully run inside this for each. Then if uh, say the post title is empty, we're going to return false because in our case here, the post title and post information are both required fields. So if either of these are empty, we're going to say that we want to override to return false. Also similar if they're both passed through, but for some reason it fails to run this SQL query, we're then switching back to false. So basically we're saying false. If it finds any rows, then we're saying true. And then we're saying going through the edit process. If it fails to edit, if it fails to update the information or there's information in, not uh, provided, then we're going to return false again. So a little bit trickier than the normal, but false, true, false <laughs> is what that one's doing. And then that will return at the end. Delete the data, we're returning false by default, going through and finding similar to the last one that if any results are provided from the, S, uh, from the select statement, then we're going to return true. And then if it goes through the process and it fails to update at some stage, then we're returning to false again. So again, another false, true, false. And the only reason we're doing that, by the way, is because there is the for each process. If there wasn't a for each process and we just had one query that we're updating, we wouldn't need to do that. But because this can encompass multiple entries, we need to cover ourselves in that by default here, we're going to assume that they're all going to pass. But if something occurs in just one of those entries, we want to say that this failed to run. Now you could break that down at a more granular level where you could have for each of the entries themselves, they get a different response. But in this case, we're just going to give an overarching false or true. We also have the verify access token and by default it's false. And if we manage to find a result, we're then going to return that actual row back to the user and the increment access usage as well return false by default and if it's managed to get through the entire process and has successfully updated uh, we're then going to return true and so that's the real general gist then going through the uh, the actual like process here i've gone through and filled out at each stage so if we manage to get a fail on the connection then we failed to mysql if we managed to get a fail on the access granted then the access token wasn't accepted and these messages can be tailored to however you think but the last piece that we're missing is the actual response data. So that is for each of these insert, read, edit, and delete. If they manage to get through the entire process, what does that information then need to do with that return data array that we originally set up? So I'm going to go through, I'm going to set those up, and I'm going to come back and go over them. Okay, so we've gone through and we've now expanded out the general area here so we've got still the different request types we've got insert get info edit and delete info and what we're doing here is we're basically going through we're getting the response from the function 
We're saying if the response is false, then we're going to put in this error message. Otherwise, if it passed, we're going to set the success to true because it successfully ran the process and the error we're going to set to nothing. Now in the insert data case, there's no data to send. In the read data section though, there is data that we want to send through and that is the actual response that was sent out from the database itself. So we want to provide the response as the data field. In all the other ones, edit info and delete info, we are not sending through any data uh, because they have no data to output. So let's go through now and actually run uh, some examples. So let me bring up Chrome uh, and we're going to go through and actually run a request. So firstly, I go to the request.php here and we get access token wasn't accepted. And if we look back at the code here, we can see in the area of the top here that basically it's going through, it's setting default data as invalid request. It's saying connection, uh, if it failed to connect to the MySQL, which I could emulate as well, but I'm just gonna leave that for right now. But we're going through the first thing after that and seeing does the access token that we've received, does it actually match what we require? And in this case, I gave it no access token. So that is the error message that we expected. Now, if I jump back to Chrome here and we pop in a access token with it, and I'm gonna use the same access token they used last time, which was the access token one, and hit enter, we then get a invalid request message. So looking back at Sublime again, we can see here that it's going through, it's failed to, uh, it passed the uh, MySQL connection, it passed the verify access, we went through and incremented the access usage, and that successfully ran, and we get to the get request type, and I didn't provide a request type, so it doesn't know what to do. Now, just to give uh, a little bit more of an example, if we jump back to Chrome and we look at the API access table, we can actually uh, go through and change this. So currently the usage count is at 19. Let's say that the usage max is at 19 as well. And if we jump back into the page, we hit refresh, we actually get the access token has run out of usage. And so that's just to give a quick example of that step between the two uh, there. So let's, let's change this back to 100 just so we have no issue running this. And if we hit refresh again, that's okay, fine. Invalid request type. That's what we expect. So now that we got to the request type, let's go through and we're going to get some information. So I'm going to run the get info uh, request. And if I hit enter here, it's failed to obtain data. And that's because I haven't given it an ID. Like if we look back at Sublime again, uh, for the get info, oops, if we get the get info function, so we're running read the data function, I head up to the read the data, we're looking for this ID, and by not supplying an ID, it just doesn't know what it's supposed to be grabbing. And in fact, uh, this should probably have a little bit more of error checking around it in that uh, if the ID is empty, or if the ID isn't empty, let's continue running this function. So let's just say that if this isn't empty, then let's keep running this function. Because at the moment we're sending through an SQL statement where it's saying, select all from API information where the ID equals nothing. And that's currently not possible in the system that we have, but just slight error checking there. Again, this is not a full-fledged API or anything like that. This is more for fun, but uh, you know, error checking is always nice. So anyway, we are going through and we're now not able to obtain the data. And that's what we expect because we didn't provide an ID. So now if I provide an ID of two, let's say, again, it will say failed to find because if I go to the API information, table, we have an ID of one for this in individual entry, and we have no other data. So I need to provide an ID of one, and this is the, the sort of error checking that you can do. There, there's also different levels of error checking and, and information you want to provide back, in that you could have that uh, it failed to obtain that ID, is what we could have had, or if we didn't provide an ID, we could have provided an, a message back saying, we expected this parameter to be sent through. Now there's 
many different levels that you can provide that. If you're a public-based API, you probably don't really want to provide that sort of information. Whereas if it's a paid or private-based API, giving back a, a bit more information definitely helps an end uh, developer to continue developing their system correctly. But anyway, this is again, not a fully fledged API. So I'm sending through an ID equals one. We get back success is true, no error data. And here's our specific data uh, in JSON format. So if we actually copy this and head to something like uh, JSON lint, uh, which I use from time to time, pop that in and hit validate, we can then see it uh, coming through. Firstly, down the bottom of this page, we can see valid JSON, which is a great start. Uh, but we can then see uh, the individual piece of information as we require and expect it to. And so that's it. That's, that's now a, a system where we're able to take a request from a user, go through a process in, in our code here in which at the moment, again, it's just going line by line, but take him through a process to see, do we have a MySQL connection? Is it valid? Is there any access token? Have we run out the usage? Have we got the right request type provided? And go through and actually do the action and provide that all back to the user. So that is the API usage and, and turning into a JSON format so that another server then can request this and actually use that on their end. And so that's it guys. We've gone through, we've developed the actual API out to a state where other servers can actually query into this and make calls as they require. Guys, if you have any ideas for the next video, please put it down in the comments. Otherwise, we're gonna move into probably user accounts and how they can dictate the JSON responses and where we might move people based on what they've queried. Anyway, cheers.